Kayla was a beautiful woman, inside and out. She loved venturing outdoors and into the great unknown. She was an avid camper, and as much as her parents and boyfriend were against it, she would often venture out into various campgrounds throughout Montana, many times deep within the wilderness, alone. All the more reason why it was such a shame, such a tragedy to the world and everything in it, when the 400-pound grizzly bear tore into her tent, clenched its jaws around her skinny little leg, and pulled her away. The screams, the shouts, the terror all around didn't stop the creature. What's up guys? Ice Man here. So this one is called Tent Bear, and it is a very unfortunate encounter with a horrific ending. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel. And if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and paw that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. So let's get into this chilling tale. This hideous bear attack took place near Browns Lake, Montana in July of 2021. A beautiful 550-acre lake Located in the Blackfoot River Valley, Browns Lake is a popular non-motorized fishing lake known for large rainbow trout. There are 112 campsites available at a public campground, each with a fire pit and picnic table. Bears are well-known inhabitants of the area, which lies in close proximity to Bob Marshall Wilderness, 1,500 square miles of publicly protected forests. The Bob, as locals call the area, is excellent grizzly bear habitat, and it's not uncommon for visitors to witness one of the huge omnivores during a trip to the wilderness area. Population density of grizzly bears is thought to be higher here than anywhere else in the lower 48 states. Grizzlies prefer habitats with some tree cover and some open meadow, like woodlands, forests, and alpine meadow ecosystems. Within these ecosystems, they will seek out riparian habitat, that is, the areas surrounding rivers or streams. They are adept at both hunting and foraging, and have highly developed olfactory systems, giving them a sense of smell that's thought to be 2100 times better than that of a human's. A food scent could be noticed from an estimated 20 miles away. This amazing ability is also how male bears locate females in heat during mating season. Kayla would travel light on her cycling adventures. She rode a Trek Dual Sport hybrid mountain bike and kept her belongings, including a small personal tent and her Osprey Wren 65-liter backpack, with a few other essential belongings. She would often leave her Montana home for a few days at a time, venturing up to 150 miles of a round trip. She was only 22 years old at the time of her death and was living with her parents. She skipped college and worked as a waitress at a local bar, saving up money and dreaming of an uncommon life in the wilderness. Her family was devastated when they got the news. Most inhabitants and visitors to Bear Country know the dangers of leaving food, wrappers, and cooking supplies out where bears can smell them. However, bears have also been observed to be attracted to strong, non-food scents as well, like baby wipes and air fresheners in certain cases. On that fateful Tuesday evening, Kayla sat in front of a small campfire and snacked on a couple Nature Valley bars. She ate every last crumb she could find, but kept the wrappers in a Ziploc bag within her tent. There were other campers nearby, a mid-30s couple, only 50 feet away, and a man camping with his two young children another 30 feet beyond them, near the river. The openness of the campsite was beautiful. The ground was tightly packed dirt, with some grass weaving throughout, and there were enough trees to make one feel secluded and safe. The night sky was beautiful as the moon was bright and full. The tent Kayla would travel with was a Summit Star one-person mesh body tent, which generally made for good protection against biting insects, 
ground abrasion, and wet conditions. The tent itself weighed only 10.5 ounces in total, less than a pound, and was the perfect fit for Kayla in her small, lean stature. She nibbled on the honey oat bars before tucking the package away that night, removing most of her clothes as it was a very humid evening, and rubbed some Bath and Body Works Cucumber Melon Body Lotion onto the dry skin of her thighs, arms, and shoulders. She tucked the lotion into a small pocket in the mesh tent and began to fall asleep. Around 3 a.m., she was awoken by sounds outside her tent. Something was scuffing around, maybe forging around the campsites. She unzipped the door and immediately spotted a large figure about 20 feet away, not far from her neighbor's tent. As she watched, a flashlight beam from inside the couple's tent illuminated the figure. It was an adult grizzly bear, maybe 400 pounds. The couple shouted at it from inside their tent, and begrudgingly, it began to walk away, swaying side to side with its head low, and it seemed to vanish into the night. Worried a little by the incident, Kayla grabbed her glow stick, along with the Ziploc bag, packed with the Nature Valley Bar wrappers, and took it over to the tree that was used for elevating food supplies. She grabbed the nylon sack supplied by the campground, as well as a 50-foot paracord and carabiner, put the wrappers into the bag, and tossed the cord over the branch of the tree, which was about 15 feet up in the air, parallel with the ground. She almost thought she heard another scuffle in the brush. She froze for a moment and held her breath, and waited about 15 seconds, but nothing, so she hurried along. She hoisted up the sack, and attached the carabiner to the steel screw eye that had been screwed securely into the trunk of the tree for this purpose. Kayla took a deep breath as her heart was still beating rapidly, but she felt relieved to have the food packages out of her tent. She made her way back to her tent and fell back asleep. Kayla awakened to the sound of something large right outside her tent. This time, the creature was extremely close. She could see its massive head press into the small mesh tent, its nose pushing right against her leg as she lay there, still and terrified. It huffed like the sounds a horse would make as it breathed in the fine aroma from the lotion she rubbed on her legs. The bear tried to lick her leg through the thin layer of material and curled its lips and lightly bit down with its front fangs on her outer upper thigh. Kayla screamed and convulsed. The bear lurched back from the sudden startling, pulling parts of the tent back with it as its teeth caught on to the material, pulling it apart. Kayla's lower body was then exposed and her thigh slightly bleeding as she attempted to shuffle back into the ruined tent. The bear sensed her feeble body and knew of her vulnerability, so it lurched at her, this time pulling her out of the tent with its forepaws, clenching its jaws around her thin ankle. It began pulling her and the remains of the small tent away, back to the thicket from which it came. Kayla, at this time, was making quite the commotion, alarming the neighboring campers of the horrid situation with her screams of death. Its yellow fangs sunk deeper into her exposed ankle, and it released her, only to climb up her body and clamp down again, this time right above her right knee. She slapped and grabbed at its massive face as it dragged her further toward the tree line, warm saliva oozing down her leg and into the new and festering wounds. The neighbor couple, who earlier shone the flashlight onto the bear, both were out of their tents at this point. The man tried to scare the bear off, but it moved so quickly in the night, dragging Kayla behind it, and it made its way into the wilderness. At that point, it began destroying her body, as if she were a quick, easy meal that it had to get rid of. It ate most of her leg and made its way up her midsection, 
exposing her ribs, raking its claws into her. After a few minutes with the young woman alone, the bear was then startled by the man who previously scared it off. This time, the man came running up with bear spray and filled the area with the spray. The bear huffed and sneezed from the pepper and ended up abandoning the young woman, but it was too late. Her body at this point was lifeless and her soul had already left her. It was estimated that this attack took place around 4.30 in the morning, and the bear was presumed to be the same bear that entered a chicken coop in a town nearby that very night, killing and eating several chickens. Officials searched for the bear on foot and by helicopter, but couldn't seem to find it. Kayla died early that morning from a loss of blood and excessive trauma to her body and skull. The bear was never found. Jeez, what do you guys think about this incident? It's concerning to me how often a person can go out into the wilderness all by themselves with next to no protection. And I did some research on these tiny tents, and if you're to look them up, these things like barely fit a whole adult in them. Like even a person could just walk by and step on it and it would like squish your face. So it's just crazy to me how someone would use a tent like this out in bear country. But I would bet it's done more often than expected. Because they are very convenient and cyclists I think really prefer these kinds of tents because they can just carry them with them all along. But it really pains me every time I hear of a young person passing away from a bear attack. And I can only hope for them that it was a swift, painless death. Because I've seen these grizzlies in action, and it's not infrequent where they'll begin eating the prey before it's even dead. So I really pity anyone who has to be involved in such an attack. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think could have been done differently to avoid this situation? Do you think if Kayla was armed with a hand cannon, if it would have saved her? Or do you think if she was armed with pepper spray, would it have saved her? Or in her circumstance, would the outcome had been the same. What if she were in a two-person tent and someone else was there with her? Do you think this pursuing bear still would have entered the tent? Or would it have been more reluctant? It seems like it's kind of rare, but at times, even grizzly bears are predatory toward humans. Although from the research I've done thus far, black bears can certainly possess predatory traits towards humans as well. So it just seems that you can never fully trust a wild animal, especially one as capable as a grizzly bear. But nonetheless, I'm curious what you guys have to say about this incident in the comments below, and I appreciate you for coming by. And again, if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and I'll see you all soon with more chilling tales from the Iceman.